In the bottom left side, we have the one and only Sly Storm Gamers, Gumio. Pretty strong Terran indeed. He's going up against a pretty strong uh, Zerg over here in the top right side. He's from the red colored type of Zerg. <laughs> it's from Onside Solar. Look that up. It's the less familiar one for me so far. Onside Gaming. Thought there might be a gaming involved. Usually these people, they do like to admit they're gamers. Which is, uh, does make sense as they are, you know, sponsoring gamers, so. Alright, Solo vs. Gumio, I think this could be a pretty close match overall, pretty tight one indeed. Gumio always a fun player to see and Solo always a very strong player to kind of benchmark players with as well, right? Although he is someone that can just have a really good day now and again and just beat anyone. Solo's kind of this, uh, I don't know, is he a gatekeeper now? Is he kind of fulfilling that role? Feels like that sometimes to me. Still really good though. Um, hello people, great game for today. Thank you, thank you. How you guys doing? Cynical death. Howdy ha, good to see you in the chat again. You watch a lot of StarCraft 2, don't you, Cynical Death? A lot of StarCraft 2. Is this life? Well, I guess we're gonna have to find out. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Couple of Zerglings here. Not too many, but since we don't have a Reaper start, this is becoming a little bit tricky, especially with the Tech Lab follow-up here for Gumiho. Actually providing quite a bit more trouble than uh, he may have bargained for, but he's controlling his SUVs. Well, he was controlling them rather nicely there for a while. It ended up losing four of them. Uh, still, you know, okay for Solar here in the end. Third base, not that delayed either, around the, well, three minutes something. He does still need a bit more money before he gets it. Starports as well. I wonder if we're just going to keep this starports on the tech lab. Interesting to, you know, you don't really often see this. And then he goes for a Viking straight away. Interesting. Now, this stack lab has not done that much. Maybe he was planning to utilize it for like uh, some sort of marauder push or something like that. Something else, but seeing that it got scouted, perhaps Gumiho is going to try to go into more of a regular type of game. Or he wants to have that Viking here, get rid of this Overlord, and then get himself some Banshees, as that is something he quite likes to do. Oh, Raven instead. Okay. Good with me. Does go down. Apparently, no transfusion on any of these screens, as well as, of course, they are all of creep. So, no transfusion then, huh? Some things you'll still easily forget about if you don't play that much Zerg. Another rescout there for Solar. Doesn't hurt either. Does manage to see that the Starbot's still on that attack lab. Realizes he will require some spore crawlers here. Never saw doing any upgrading though, so. 
Now he sees the raven here. I feel like he should be able to uh, not lose too much to that. The Viking, on the other hand, already three Overlord kills, so that is not, not nothing. I don't think I've seen Solar in any time being supply blocked, unless if I missed it. It does add to the overall total losses of minerals here he has suffered so far. I guess the four SEVs at the start of the game still probably the thing I would like to uh, avoid more so than the losses of solo from this game. You know what, Gunio getting some creep. Making life difficult for those queens, making them get some exercise. So Spire will be coming up here for Solar. Relatively quickly. Off of the three base. Fourth one on the way afterwards. Kumiho is going for quite a bit of bio from this point onwards. You should be starting to see a cloud of marines starting to form. And, you know, you should have a fair amount before the Mutalists get there, but I don't think he would have enough Marines to protect all three bases. So Missile Turret's still something we'll have to look for on that production tab. That helps support those Marines. Maybe a Raven could provide some uh, extra support there as well. Metafax with the Marines now going across the map. Could be extra ugly if he gets caught out with those Zerklings and the Banelings. And then the Mutalisk show up to shut down the Metafax even more so. Really rely on the Metafax granting you a way out of this. And, well, with these Mutalisk here, that is going to be a very difficult thing to do. Oh boy, already kind of struggling with trying to get the unload going there. As the Mutalisk just vaporized that first initial push. The Queen is here on the left flank though. Get targeted down by the Hyen and Raven. The Raven just barely survives there. But it yet lives. Where did it go? There it is. Oh, wait. Does it survive? I don't think so. No, no longer, anyway. <laughs> Mutilus got something to say about that. Alright. Just gotta be careful not to have that happen to your Mutilus. And this should be a pretty good game here for Solo to win. Finds a seat shank there as well. That could be nice if he you know, doesn't commit to it. Probably a wise choice not to commit to it. Seeing those marines coming in from the uh, the main base. Yo, attempting to strike back with some raven harassments, but seems to be struggling on the other side of the map here. Will advance once again with his troops now. Solar. I think it does is about to be at the point of an army here that could quite easily beat this of Gumiho. Um, I guess there's not that much creep here. Positioning wise, the siege tanks could get themselves in this nasty position over there, but they decide a whole different route. Which is set up at the choke point. Not where you usually see them, but it is a bit closer for the marines, and I guess it does allow the marines to be a bit more aggressive with more of them right off the bat here and it does allow Gumiho to take out this base before there's a sufficient amount of things to make Solar feel comfortable moving out behind this Gumiho taking another command center at home that's got to be a pretty pretty good feeling here I thought that if Solar doesn't feel comfortable going for the defensive uh, just to kill enemy army that maybe we would see him just run across the map, but that didn't happen either. He just kind of stayed on his own side of the map, being like, Do I engage this? Do and I don't think I will. And, well, it's a lot of army units that could have been used in a different way. Let's see if he has built up enough over time to really squash this army now. There is more reinforcements coming in, though, making it more difficult to take out again. There's something to be said about the Zerg, if you, especially with against the Terran that entrenches themselves like this. You want to take the most efficient trade as possible, of course. 
And yeah, that would be right before this batch of reinforcements arrives, right? That's when you want to take the fight because then you've had the most amount of time to increase your own army. So let's try to find some counter-attack damage, but only running with the Mutalisk and a smaller detachment of Zerklings and Mainlings. Not looking to cause too much trouble, and give me all sufficient units to kind of push that back all the way to Solar side of the map. Little hiccups here happening all of a sudden. Hope that will settle. Okay. Little hiccups in the in the stream by the The game itself really. Just gotta be careful engaging force with Bane Links, but it, I think that was an alright raid overall. So they're not quite ready for the Marine Death Ball to be running towards his natural though. Uh, it's causing quite a bit of trouble. Bainlings now starting to clear out the southern side, but the northern, northern side, definitely the more frightful one. Still has quite a bit of meat on their bones. Will these Bainlings manage to connect to the Marines? They just barely sufficiently do. Forces the callback with the Medivax to Mutalisk. Aren't able to give chase. So we will continue this game onwards in a pretty yeah, pretty equal kind of game so far. Supplies quite close together. Solus army is looking a little bit weak. And after the last couple of fights, I, I am liking Gumio's position more and more so. Regardless of those four SCVs dying at the start, he has made quite a good couple of trades uh, work out in his favor. Especially killing that fourth base without losing pretty much anything. Right, he, he traded an army afterwards, but that was more so for all their army of solar. It wasn't like he was targeting down the hatchery while the army of Gumiho was getting to deal damage. It really was uh, Gumiho just kind of walking in for free. And then later on, way later on, now, having the engagement happen. Another engagement right here. I think Gumiho will be able to stand through the wave of Banelings and Zerglings. Has two more siege tanks in the rear as well to try and help pressure and uh, really solidify his location here. Manages to take out the other fourth base of Solar. Luckily, Solar has reclaimed this fourth base, but I don't think I really would like to be on a full base economy anymore. Main base might be quite close to be uh, mined out fully. Yeah. Now he does start to be a bit more aggressive on the counter aggression. At least sends a big flock of mutalisks, 17 of them. Sort of realizes that it's a little bit too late right now. Kumiho will be able to uh, force Solar out of this game. And we're seeing pretty much the same build out of Gumiho here. Not much has transpired yet. I don't know if you guys heard me talking about the spawning pool with the Reaper thing. And how, you know, I would feel very uncomfortable if uh, if I were Gumiho here trying to play um, without any units from the barracks initially. Seeing how many spawning pool first builds are coming now in nowadays from, uh, from these Korean Zergs in particular. bit of an... I think it was an ambulance, but that's fine. That's a, a good time to mute. Tech Lab on that starport, shining nice and bright, being spotted by the Overlord. Not even... Yeah, okay, I guess Mio did see that Overlord come in. He's still committed to the Banshee, though, so... Will not deviate from his plans. Uh, even gonna use this Banshee here, in case that... <laughs> he's like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, you know I'm going Banshee, that's fine with me. I mean, his Banshee control is immaculate, so... Like, it... So many times, people have known Gumio has gone for Banshees and then prepared for it, right? In every way you, you imagine you would need to. And then he just still kills, like, 10-plus workers. 
It is silly. Okay, he only gets one Banshee? Really? Okay, he gets one Banshee, but he gets Cloak for it. Interesting. Coming in. What's set up for defensive? There's, there's a Queen. Is there a Queen over here as well? Yes, there is, but... He's scouring the corners, trying to find an angle. Some sort of opportunity here in between the three bases, and looks like, yeah, we will find one. Even with, uh, what is that, five queens at the third base. <laughs> he only gets two, uh, two drones, but that's all right. Gets another one over here. Slowly builds it up. Being nice and careful. Solar being pretty good with zoning away the Banshee as well, though. That has to be said. And only three kills there. Well, he keeps the Banshee alive, though, so I'd say that is still worth it. Greens and a Banshee. Um, well, I guess the Banshee. Where is it? Gathering up here as well. Yep, together with the tank. Pretty scary force at this point. Each tank setting up at the edge of that choke. Is he just planning to stay here for a little bit to nine creep? Hmm. Yeah, wow, okay, he's setting up a bunker even. He wants to keep this choke here. And he wants to keep it rid of most of the creep. Very interesting. So behind this, he still has three racks, the one factory, one starport. He's getting plus one. I imagine he's just going to try to keep gathering more and more units there to slowly keep pushing in. That's what it feels like to me. It's going to be one tough place to breach as well here for Sol. He's just trying to buy time with his queens. He doesn't want this entire area to become rid of creep. Uh, has to keep some of those creep tumors there. And she on to the third base, making life difficult even more so for Solar. Ooh, sending the Bailings onto the Siege Sink there. Okay, they do manage to run by. And I think he has managed to deal with this rather nicely. Maybe started spreading himself a bit too thin across the edges there of solar space or maybe it was just a bit too long since his reinforcements uh, gathered up solar just found a nice opportunity there to take the higher supply trade Junio not done just quite yet solar gonna <laughs> go for the counter attack though this is a destructive amount of Zerklings now running into the main base as well. Are they going to commit to the main base? There's still a supply depot on the race there, but I guess this might be where Gumiho is focused right now as well as Solar. Be careful running back and forth. The Zerklings are satisfied with what they've done in a natural base. I'm going to retreat to try to keep this third base alive. It's going to be a while before those Zerklings get here though, and they will not be a part of this big fight. But it does not matter. Solar having enough to just absolutely crush that Terran position there as well. He remains uh, remains a full base Zerg for the time being. Whereas Guiho, on the other hand, he is still on the two base. I'm not quite sure what his plan is in the future here. He hasn't brought his SCVs along, then again, why would you? Against Banians. Can be a bit rough. Quite feisty, really would like to see him get a good trade here, but having to pick up the Marines, that means death of the Siege Tanks as well, so a good amount of Marines there in the background. Solar not even trying to send those Queens. Okay, now he's going to send those Queens to deal with the... Uh, the Liberator. Prioritizing the Spore Crawler there quite nicely. And this is just not going to work anymore for Gumiho. He's got a couple of boys here. He's got some more stuff running across the map. Another Siege Tank and more Marines. But what is he going to do with them? How is he going to achieve some sort of victory here? 
Is there a siege tank place anywhere that's better than this? Where we are anticipating Gumio taking better trades. I don't think so. It's just a 60 worker versus 40 worker difference here. You know, 50% of Gumio's workers are just extra workers for uh, for solar here. And that has been for what? How many minutes are we in? Five minutes? For five minutes, you know. So I don't think that's a good way out of this game anymore for Gumio. Except for the ever so graceful GG. Gonna continue onwards though. Yeah, I mean he has 50 army supply. Liberators. I guess solar, is he no, he's not struggling to spend his minerals. He is trading quite inefficiently. Perhaps overzealous. Which I can imagine because that's that's how I was feeling about his position as well, and I can see everything. That queen alive. And fusion is pretty good. Banelings need to arrive as well. Those marines now jumping on top of the opportunity here to get the queens. Is there more in the main base? No, there is not. But there will be now with these marines here. Gotta pull back the queens a little bit. Spread out your zirkling banelings. Or otherwise they will just pick up and go to the low ground again. And yeah, they'll get more value. Did have enough to spread out his uh, Zirkling Banging Army, but deciding not to do it. Another drop into the main. No, he will decline that invitation. Quite low HP are the medevacs carrying the Marines right now. It's not a good place to drop, though. And catches a lot of uh, Zirklings here before they manage to do anything. Zirkling counterattack, finding more Marines in a siege tank. I think we're going to go into a base trade. Actually, Solar here still struggling with his army supply. This could work out for Gumiho yet, even though his opponent has been gaining plus 50% extra minerals than him. He's just been... <laughs> He's just been trading so efficiently. Look at this. Double the minerals lost here by Solar so far. As Solar loses a base. He's still three bases, he's still a base ahead of his opponents. He's still good on the workers, so I guess he's still okay. But man, this would be an ugly fashion to lose a best of three. Not one that I would wish upon Solar here. He deserves better than that. Right. 70 army to supply strong still here for Gumiho. He's got to be careful not to lose them in the tiny batches. His units are way more val uh, valuable than the ones of Solar right now. And he's going to go into the main base. Has a siege tank supporting the marines from the low ground. Come on, liberate a siege up. There you go. They will be there in time before the Hydra Queens are there. Ooh, that is some big banglings. Big pickup as well, to be fair. That siege tank is definitely getting a lot of kills onto the Banelings. 30-something kills there in the end. The Liberators are dealing with the Hydra Queen. But this is the moment he needs to keep things going right here, right now. He has still got a good batch of Marines here. Where are the Banelings? Only two available at the moment. Are they going to get targeted down? One of them is getting low. That's one. The other one. Oh, more coming in from the other base. Goodness, give me off. Microing his absolute heart out. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna break Solo here still? Just because his army will not die. <laughs> I think so. Yep. Yep. He's done. Did it, man. That's fantastic. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. That's impressive. 
That's very impressive. 